Ukraine's president on Wednesday unveiled a memorial in Kiev dedicated to the victims of the 1944 Crimean deportation. The deportation, organized by the Soviet authorities, forcibly uprooted hundreds of thousands of ethnic Tatars from Crimea and transported them to Central Asia. Thousands died along the way. It was only in the late 1980s that Crimean Tatars were able to return to Ukraine. Volodymyr Zelensky drew parallels between the events of 1944 and the current war. Crimea is our home, and we must go forward until the invaders leave our home, Zelensky said. The memorial was opened on the sidelines of the Crimean summit held in Kiev. The summit was attended by the president of Lithuania and the prime minister of Croatia. Крим – Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Monday called for swift action on pledges made at a meeting with Allied military leaders at Ramstein Air Base in Germany last week. Following a report on the meeting's outcomes by Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustam Yumarov, Zelensky stressed the urgency of Allied assistance to help cut Russia's combat capabilities. What is needed in September must be delivered to our troops in September, Zelensky said in his nightly video address. Zelensky appeared in person at the meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, telling partners that Ukraine needs the ability to strike deep within Russia now. The group gathers regularly to coordinate weapons aid for the war effort. After thanking troops for steadfastly repelling Russian assaults and reclaiming our positions, Zelensky said that equally important is destroying as many of the occupiers' forces as possible. In the Pokrovsk and Kurakov directions, the Russian army must lose as much combat capability as possible, he added. Russia has intensified missile and drone attacks on Ukrainian cities in recent weeks, targeting energy infrastructure across the country and causing deadly strikes in residential areas. Всі досягнуті домовленості мають бути реалізовані максимально швидко. Те, що потрібно у вересні, має бути поставлено у наші війська саме у вересні. Дякую всім нашим підрозділам на фронті, які забезпечують повне виконання завдань. Та дійсно стійко відбивають російські штурми і відновлюють наші позиції. І це важливо. Так само важливо знищувати якомога більше сил окупанта. Покровський напрямок, Курахівський, саме там російська армія повинна втратити якнайбільше боєздатності. SpaceX launched a rocket with a four-person crew from Cape Canaveral, Florida, Tuesday morning. The mission was originally scheduled to launch August 27, but has encountered delays first for a helium leak and then for bad weather. It will feature a crew of four, the mission's commander, Jared Isaac Mann, Scott Poteet, a 20-year Air Force veteran pilot, and SpaceX employees Anna Menon and Sarah Gillis. Launching on a Falcon 9 rocket, they will travel in a SpaceX Dragon capsule named Resilience. 
Polaris Dawn's time in space will be spent testing communications between the craft and Earth via Starlink satellites and completing almost 40 experiments. Many of the experiments will study how the human body reacts in low-gravity environments and measure the radiation the capsule receives. But Polaris Dawn's biggest task will be the first private spacewalk. The spacewalk will test out SpaceX's new extravehicular activity, or EVA, suits and learn how they function in the low-gravity environment of space. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition, and one. Go Falcon, go Polaris. Copy, one Alpha. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Thumbs up from the pilot on the left side there. Max Q. We're throttled back throttle up, up to power. One Bravo. And we heard the call out, one Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. And back chill is underway. The announcement lets us know we've begun the final chill of the second stage engine in preparation for its activity coming up at about T plus two minutes and 40 seconds. Two minutes into flight, 